Okay, I'll start with a very simple example, not from the book, but ourselves. we will create. We create one example. So I'll start with a very simple thing. Uh, we say that Suppose we have to paint a room, okay? This is what we are doing. And uh, we say that, we know that the room requires five liters of paint at dollar 10 per liter so budget is dollar 10 so this is the scenario that we have to paint a room and we know that within the room we need five liters of paint so five liter mean the quantity and the price is $10 per liter. So I've got a quantity standard five liter and the price standard, which is $10 per liter and total budget is $10 is $50. I'm sorry, total budget I should write down here 50. is 50, not 10, it's 50. Okay, total budget is 50. Now what happens? I go to market for buying some paint and somebody told me that, you know, there is some very good quality paint, a new brand, and that is $9 per liter. So you don't have to pay 10, you can pay nine and uh, save some money. So I was very happy. What I did that, we purchased five liters. We purchased five liters at $9, which makes dollar 45 so we thought that we saved five dollars because we saved one dollar per liter so we saved some money you come back and start doing the job so when you were doing the paint so what happened that uh, you know the four walls are done the five liters you had it is finished but your ceiling is still remaining so ceiling is still there you have not finished that ceiling so paint is finished. Why the paint finished? Because it was cheap, because it was low quality, because it was very thin. I had to make three coats. I have to paint the wall three times before the paint gave any effect. So I used it more because it was thin, it was cheap. I got quite angry, but we went to the market and we purchased one liter more at nine dollars and i'm sure that you guys would agree with me that this thing happens with you many times in real life and we we paid nine dollars more okay so we paid dollar nine more now our total cost for the paint has gone up to 54 dollars so our actual budget was 50 but we spent 54 so we spent four dollars more so we need to find out that why did we spend $4 more? Did we bought it expensive? The answer is no, we did not buy it expensive. We even purchased it at a lower price at $9. So price is not our issue. Then what happened? Usage is our issue because we initially thought to spend five liters, but we ended up in spending six liters. So our usage had the problem and probably usage is due to the quality. But the price was okay, price was favorable because we were buying it cheaper than what our budget was. So you need to now calculate your price variance. You call it material price variance, okay? So material price variance, you should talk about the actual quantity. Always remember, talk about actual quantity purchased this is where you start thinking so how many how many liters of paint i purchased we said that six liters should cost 
at the rate of dollar 10 60 dollars 6 liters because 6 liters you purchased did actually cost actually did cost how much you paid you know 6 times 9 okay this is what it cost you 6 times 9 it is 54. 54 so it means that you spent less on the pay so there is a variance 6 favorable which is you call it six dollar and you call it favorable so you actually if you talk about six liters so you gave six dollar less because six liters you purchased on each liter uh, one dollar you made some savings so you've got material let me call it the name material price variance okay material price variance is six dollar favorable six dollar favorable now, the second thing which we need to do is material usage variance. The second variance we need to calculate is material usage variance. And material usage variance, again, we talk about how many, how many, you, how much we used. And so we say that room should use six liters, okay? Okay, let's not put the room, let's call it the job. Okay. The job should use six liters, but it did use, sorry, it should use five. Five. It, it, it should use five liters, but it used six liters, okay? So you would say that material, usage variance and let me take it here somewhere material usage variance is one liter adverse okay i call it adverse now you should remember that variances are never expressed in terms of you know liters or kilometers or or, or, or centimeters or whatever variances are always expressed in terms of dollars because our problem was that actual profit budgeted profit was in dollar so we are when we are calculating variances we have to convert them into numbers now this is one liter you should say that standard price of liter standard price of one liter was dollar 10 this is what you suppose so then you would say that you know uh, one liter multiplied by dollar 10 so it comes ten dollars so ten dollar is my material usage variance and this is actually adverse if i put here like this so i've got a material usage variance ten dollars adverse so if it is ten dollar adverse now what do i have i've got variances which is material usage variance which is ten dollar adverse and I have material price variance, which is $6 favorable. So two variances you have. So what happened that on purchase price, you were favorable by $6. On usage, you are adverse by $10. So here you've got profit. You are favorable with four. Here you are in loss of 10. So your net variance, and then you say that, material total variance so total variance is like i would say that usage variance and i would say price variance by the way usage variance is also called quantity variance this is 10 adverse and uh, price variance is you know it is six favorable and when you make a total of that it will give you material variance which is four adverse so if you see material variance force adverse four adverse you are getting here because 54 and 50 so you should have spent 50 but you spent 54 it means that you spent four dollar more and that four dollar more 
is further split in that like this ten dollar adverse four dollar favorable so you may have a material price variance which is favorable and a material adverse variance a material usage variance which is adverse the sum total of that will make the total material variance so it was like a very simple thing i took a lot of time because i'm not doing a question i'm trying to explain so when you explain of course it takes time but when you will start doing questions it would be very simple Variance analysis, I always say the same one word. I mean, it's been years and years, probably 10 years, I'm repeating the same statement that variance analysis, it looks like to me, like just like riding a bicycle, which looks very difficult in the beginning. But once you sit on the bicycle, then it becomes very simple. You just have to pedal. That's all. Otherwise, in the beginning, when you are not sitting on the bicycle, you, you just are scared that, you know, uh, how would I keep the balance without having my feet on the ground. But once you are on the bicycle, then you go. Variances are the same. In the beginning, it looks that they are very complex. But once you start doing it, I can assure you that there could be nothing easier than variance analysis. So let's start doing the general model. 